Look at these freaking fracking clouds today. They're crazy. I can't deal with the fact I shot this amazing time lapse the other day and there was this huge frickin' dot on the lens. <laughs> okay. I hope that's it. I know I was a little vague in the pilot on exactly what I did. You could kind of see the space that I was in, but not really. This is the one I've been regretting so much. I got to fit into 10 minutes. It's going to be like crazy. Today's episode is about how I acquired one of the most beautiful daylight studios in all of Los Angeles. Let's start off from the beginning. I ended up bartending at a place called Vida in Los Feliz. The owner of the bar was actually friends with a man named Stephen Kahn. Stephen! Good seeing you, bro. Now, Stephen Kahn is one of my mentors. He was a photographer in LA and he worked at this place called Smashbox. Smashbox was literally paying you to go to the best photography school in the world. Steven ended up hiring me there as a driver. And so he basically brought me in and mentored me. I was probably there for about seven or eight years. I started going out to all these locations with these photographers. I was just fascinated. People that had properties that they would rent out for shoots. In my mind, I was just going, what type of business could I start that's never gonna go away? Growing up in the 80s and 90s, watching movies like Quicksilver, the Kevin Bacon bike messenger movie, he had this amazing loft he would ride his bike around in. Movies like Great Expectations, the loft they give him in New York to be able to do his painting. Of a cave where the rest of us go to feel normal. Of course, the movie Big. So basically for a year and a half, I looked all over Craigslist and I was just looking for a small loft to be able to shoot my headshots in. I mean, a lot of people, is this out of focus? <laughs> I looked for a year and a half and I came across this ad on Craigslist for this place that was listed as 5,000 square feet. I came in and I met a guy named Joseph Inyati. Hey man, where you been? How are you doing? How are you? I'm doing good. The, the building itself was a 50,000 square foot rug factory. <music> Filled with rugs. The top floor of his building had these amazing arching windows. It was probably about triple what my budget was. And again, the place was so gigantic. Came a couple times, I sat, I watched the sunset, and I was just blown away. And so what I did was I wrote out all these fake invoices of photography jobs that I was doing. Like I was making 500 to a thousand dollars a job. So I told Joseph, I'm like, yeah, I'm making about five grand a month. I can definitely afford this place. I put the deposit down. And after I put that deposit down, I had $7 left in my bank. I didn't have the credit nor the income to be able to afford this place, but I gotta get out of my old apartment. And I was getting over this girl. Problem was is that she only lived about four blocks away from me. I was constantly afraid of running into her everywhere. And it was just, I was heartbroken, just like Noah in the notebook. After seeing Allie that day, something went sideways. He restored the old house where they had come that night. Did I mention she looks just like Rachel McAdams? But I was like, I'll fix this place up and I'll get the girl back. It's all about timing. So here I was all depressed and I was just like, you know what? I only got one opportunity in life. Do something crazy, something insane. I didn't have enough money for food, for gas, anything. And so thank God I worked at Smashbox because I would literally steal all the leftovers, the catering from the jobs every single night. For months, I lived off of chicken breast, couscous, and old salad because that's all they serve on Photoshop. Thank God the third week I was here, I booked a movie. My name is Riley Cole. 
and I'm not exactly what you would call normal. I ended up meeting a friend of mine, Ryan Moran. We've been friends ever since that time. They basically shot for two days and we agreed on $250 a day. I got paid $500 to watch someone make a move. I was just, my mind, I was like, this could actually work. From that point on, every month, I booked at least one job. Because Joseph was so kind in letting me do all these renovations, I helped him build his first stage downstairs. We built the psych stage. I showed him this is how you get clients. This is what you need. It took him about a year to get rid of all the rug and now he has five running stages downstairs of town. I used to love, and I and I did it before too, on Instagram you'd go on set to a cool location. You'd sit there, you'd take a picture of your feet on set or you there in front of the statue and be like my office for the day. Let me tell you something. Let me show you my office every day. Oh. Want to see something cool? This is what this place used to look like. I mean, a kitchen that was essentially like kitchens that I grew up in in Nebraska. Reminds me of home a little bit. Put bathtub, vintage grand Irving piano. A little bit out of tune, but it still plays a little bit. But I had to finally build a psych wall because regardless of how awesome your location is, they almost always need a curved psych wall to be able to do the cover in. This is gonna be the part that's gonna take forever. Now that's a time lapse. That is a time lapse, folks. Man, these clouds are insane.